My name is Mitch Bolo. On the line, we have Doreen Blaker, a candidate in the upcoming KBIC elections from the Barragas side and an incumbent. Doreen, could you please first introduce yourself and give us a rundown on your history with tribal government? Okay, thank you, Mitch, for having me. Uh, Bonjour. My name is Doreen Blaker, and I currently sit on the tribal council. I've been a part of the community and things that we've done pretty much my whole life. I enjoy volunteering. I enjoy being on the council. I enjoy working with other governments. I enjoy seeing things get accomplished, dealing with things. I'm a firm believer that hope and stability will get us through some of the current times we're dealing with right now. Uh, we are doing a lot of things that, uh, that and trying to uh, inform the community, community of things that we're doing. And um, I've just, I don't know, I've always been interested in government. I've always thought it an, in, an interesting aspect of, of uh, our daily lives. Okay, so then... Oh, go ahead. Oh, so what motivates you to run in this election then? In this election? Yeah, like more yeah. specifically this time around. In this time around? I I think I just refer back. I just enjoy being on the council. I enjoy, well, I don't know if I really enjoyed this year, but it's good to see how we're dealing with something that was totally unexpected and unforeseen. And as you know, and I and everybody else knows that we're dealing with a national health crisis. We're dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's brought forth a, a lot of challenges and it uh, makes you reflect and think and appreciate things that you've ha- you have and want to continue to have and you want the membership to have. First and foremost, we want to protect our, our tribal members. We want to protect our, re- our resources that we have so that we can uh, continue into the future. So I would say that a lot of coming forward this year and rerunning had to do with, you know, this totally different challenge that we've faced as a a tribal government and a tribal people. Okay. Moving on to the next question. What is your opinion on the tribe being involved in the marijuana business? Perfectly fine. Mitch, I worked at the tribal court. I was a defense advocate and I had no problem with, uh, with marijuana. I never believed it to be a gateway drug. I believe that there's many underlying things that drive substance abuse and, um, that just was never one of them. Uh, I see a lot of medicinal things. Uh, looking at it historically, uh, marijuana, hemp, uh, all sorts of products like that were actually used back in the early 20th century, and it was only after Prohibition ended that they began to turn their sights on, on marijuana. I think we have a, a great opportunity for an expansion of revenue. Remember, we lost our tipple revenue when the federal government just cast aside our, our, uh, tribe's, ability, our tribe's ability to uh, look at various forms of communication and have input onto them where companies would pay us to uh, ask us about, you know, whether... Uh, where they were putting up communication towers and stuff was that, you know, affecting the tribe or anything. We had a great program with TIPO, and we lost that revenue. Well, we're a little different than a big company. Our monies go back into our, our programs, into health and education and stuff. So I see this as a great avenue. I think this is a interesting trail-breaking. Similar, I watched, I watched casino gaming as a young person. I watched how that expanded, and I think, I see the tribe in, in the same similar position that we can uh, go forward with this and make this into something great. We'll be starting, and you know, con- kudos and congratulations to all the work that's been done by everybody that's been working on this. Um, we'll be having a soft opening tentatively late December, early January, and there's different, so many different ideas that I'm hearing that, that's coming out of this. And one of the most particularly interesting ones to me is, is the growth the uh, growing it there's a high demand for it we have a we have an agricultural building over with the community college there's ways that we can tie this into so many different things and um, there'll be a demand for the product and that's an area that we should really focus on Um, selling I think that's great but I would really like to see us expand and they are moving strongly and talking with Councilman Loomsfoot at the at the growth and distribution of it I think it's great it's totally different I believe they're looking towards decriminalizing. There was some stuff in Congress. I really didn't get to read that article today, but and uh, expunging some of these nonviolent 
uh, marijuana charges. I, that's fantastic. Uh, when people are looking for jobs and they've got, you know, possession on it, you know, come on. If they had a little bit of weed on them, that should, that should be expunged. And they need, they need to have the ability to start over. Yeah. So I, I think, I think, I think it's a wide open field, Mitch, and I'm looking forward to it. All right. Very good. On to the next one. Another big topic around here. Uh, what is your opinion on term limits? I think that it can be done. I, di- I didn't agree with uh, what had been presented, but that doesn't mean that I, it can't be it, it, it can't be done. What I seen was they had started out really good, and then it and it wasn't nobody's fault. We had a pandemic. We you know attentions were focused towards that, and I think that there was just a little bit too much of a rush to try to get something brought before the year is done, and and you can't do that. The separation of powers or that creation of the judicial branch took three years to do. The membership one took a long time also. So I think they just have to go back to the drawing board with it and take into account everybody's opinion on what it what it could be. I, you know, my own personal opinion, I can tell you what that is. I think you could run three or four terms and then you could step back and then somebody else, you know, somebody else can run. And then maybe, you know, if you want to run in a couple of years after that, run again that way or you know maybe make the terms longer there there's a wide open way that you know i keep saying wide open there's just a lot of opportunity that can be done when looking at this as a young man mitch you could run a couple of years and then step back run again i mean you have many years in front of you the the term when we look at a constitutional change the constitutional change isn't necessarily for the here and now it's for our future so when you look at something like a term limit you want the ability of young people that are coming up to be able to, you know, it, it shouldn't be that you run. And I got this actually from listening to another candidate, Michael Lottie, from a couple of years ago, and he said, I'm a young man. I, I, don't, I didn't believe in a term limit because I want to have the ability to run throughout my life. And I agree with that. I think you can come up with a term limit, but there's, you know, take into consideration a variety of things before um, shutting out, you know, shutting down completely, uh, a person's ability to ever run, especially when you look at young people or the upcoming leaders or leaders that are, you know, waiting to be born. So when you look at a constitutional change, you should always have that in mind that most importantly, you need to look at your future. That leads right into this question. Then what is your opinion on blood quantum? Well, Mitch, I could probably jump on <laughs> a soapbox on that one. Um, <clears throat> where did blood quantum come from? Blood quantum was something that was implemented back in, well, it, it, it got implemented into our Constitution, and we know where the Constitution came from. The idea was from um, a federal government official, and he wanted to, many of the policies, you know, I'm trying to do this in a nutshell, many of the policies that had been formed uh, were very devastating on Indian nations. They did uh, the Mary, Merriam Report. It was uh, terrible. So he had kind of, they had kind of an idea that they would do this you know, assimilation gradually. And so blood quantum came into that. And that's not actually really a a cultural thing. It's more of a modern thing. And blood quantum came from, I mean, it actually has roots traced all the way back to Scotland. And uh, the property, uh, a a property claims um, right that was actually decided where blood quantum had come in. So this had come, this is a European concept. This came over with uh, the Europeans. And they're the ones who brought this blood quantum. And it's really strange is because blood quantum was used to also determine slaves. That even if you even had a, a, a drop of uh, African-American or black blood, you, would, you were still considered a slave. They actually had a, like, um, different terminologies for that. So then when we look at how they're doing it with Native Americans, well, the idea is to, to phase, you know, to phase it out. So basically the blood quantum was to keep the African American a slave and to turn the red man white. I don't believe in blood quantum. I believe that your ties are close to your community. I think you should be proven that you should be, you, you should be tied to your community that way. Um, I, 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 it's a pedigree. Um, what other, what other ethnicity in the United States has to prove themselves with blood quantum? I, I don't agree with that. I don't believe, you know, if I look at it through my own, and this is only me, I don't believe that the, that the spirits recognize you by your blood quantum. I believe it's only the federal government who's implemented it. And the idea is a gradual assimilation to end us because they cannot break a treaty with us. There's something called uh, due process and just compensation in, in the um, United States Constitution. So they couldn't just end the treaties. 
But if they were to say there's no more Indians, well, then they would end us. And yeah. then again, going back and looking at our future, that's not what we want. That's not who we are. We are, you know, a, a great community. And we don't sit there and look at each other as, oh, there's, you know, so-and-so the quarter blood or there's so-and-so the three quarter. You know, it's like, no, there's my cousin, there's my friend, there's an elder, there's the youth. You know, we don't look at ourselves that, like that. So why do we have to have that? I think that that's going to have to be revisited again. I really do. Okay. I, don't, I do not believe. Um, and, 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 and think about it. Um, they never even had good records to begin with. So how are they going to say this is your blood quantum or that's your blood quantum? Why? Because someone took a look at you when you were standing there and decided that, um, oh, okay, you must have been a full blood or you must have been a quarter or, you know, yeah. they never even had really legitimate ways to even start that. So I could go on and on about blood <laughs> quantum, but I, I think that that's another area that needs to be addressed. We have to preserve our tribe. Absolutely. Okay. Moving on to this one. Uh, how has culture played a role in your life? Culture, culture has many, culture has many aspects. Um, if you look at it, we have, you know, culture can be language, culture can be spirituality, culture can be traditional teachings, values that we have. So um, we're all raised in in culture. When we look at, um, when we look at ourselves, you know, what is one of the common uh, teachings that we have? You know, we're we're here because of our ancestors. We're to preserve the future for our children that are coming. We have a great respect for the earth. Um, uh, we're, we're very generous people. We are very close to each other when it com- you know, comes in times of need. We reach out, we help each other, we volunteer. Those are all cultural values that have been put into us as a KBIC members, things that we were raised with. These are things that are expected of you. These are things that we do because we're KBIC. Um, looking at I, I believe we all have paths. I believe that if you've chosen a path with, and you maybe you're a Christian, be a good Christian. If you've chosen to be a good traditionalist, be a good traditionalist. One thing that Native Americans never did, we never had holy wars. So, we, you know, um, I, think, I think we believe more that we're judged on, you know, how we treat each other, what we're doing. How do we preserve our tribe? How do we treat each other? How do we uh, treat our elders? How do you treat your children? Uh, if we look back at uh, traditional teachings, um, we have beautiful, beautiful creation stories, beautiful lessons behind a lot of, of teaching. Um, it's nice. Uh, how, do, how do I want to say this? Uh, looking at language. Language is, I was just thinking about language. We are going through budgets, and I thought, wow, our language program has been here for about 10 years. And I thought, what have we got? And then I thought again, well, it took them decades to beat it out of us. It's going yeah. to take us decades to get it back. So we're a work in progress when it comes to language. Um, looking at our traditional medicines, our traditional teas and stuff, one thing that this pandemic has taught me is we've seen how the price of things have began to rise. You know, $8 for a pound of hamburger, uh, fruit becomes very expensive. So we have to kind of go back and fall on to those, those simple teachings that we had on, on growing gardens, on gathering um uh, Gathering things like gathering stuff for teas, gathering up medicines, growing medicines. Um, I grew my own tobacco this year. I was pretty proud of myself <laughs> on that, even though I, one time, I don't know if it was deer or rabbit, got a hold of my tobacco plants and uh-huh. they rebounded again. And um, I really enjoyed that because there was a, a culture and there was a, there was community. We all would gather together in our little community gardens. I had one out here also. You know, comparing, looking at each other's gardens, giving each other, you know, tips on that. So uh, I believe that part of the culture is also food sovereignty and falling back on some of the things that we have. And um, when and looking at, you know, a couple ideas, and they were actually brought out when we were looking at dispersing treasury monies, was, you know, a fisheries or maybe a cattle ranch. And I just don't think we had enough time to properly plan for that. But that's something that we should look at. And we should incorporate our our rice, we should incorporate um, just gathering up maple syrup, that kind of stuff. We could actually get a good healthy market with that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you know, culture is everyday living. Culture is what we live and breathe. Culture is what we see. Um, it's really interesting. As a firefighter, I've seen many different, within the United States, there were so many different types of culture. Um, one thing I always enjoyed going over um, and talking to local people and listening to them talk about their area and their areas of interest and listening to basically what was their culture. 
So um, culture is something we live and breathe every day. All right. It's very, very good answer. Um, on to the last thing then here is the statement to the community. Thank you very much for calling in and doing this interview, and you can address the community. Well, first of all, I want to say it's an honor and privilege to serve the KBIC mem- membership. Um, I believe good leadership inspires hope and creates stability. Um, I would have liked to talk a little bit more about uh, the pandemic and things that the tribe have, has done, but one of the things is even during this time, uh, we continue to have visions for the future by looking at different businesses like online gaming, the marijuana business. Uh, we continue to look at infrastructure projects for the tribe, the new Zeba water tower, the Kabagam sewer system. We have a really great one when we look at, uh, it's called Carbon Credit Program, and it's a carbon uh, carbon project, a carbon, I don't want to say a carbon purchasing project, but it's going to promote healthy forests. It will also promote health, healthy harvesting practices. Um, I just want to remind everybody that voting is in December 10th in Marquette, that December 12th, the polls are open from 10 to 6 at the Ojibwe Senior Citizens in Ziba Hall. Please continue to practice social distancing. I do want to end it with a really quick safety message. You know, during these unpredictable times of the pandemic, please practice social distancing, wear your mask, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer. We value, we value and love each other. We, you know, we want to see our elders. We want to see everybody in the community, and we can defeat this pandemic. Um, and I think that's it. We will get through this pandemic. We are KBIC. We walk in the footsteps of our ancestors. Uh, one, one of the things, a little story I wanted to bring up was it, w- it was a hectic time in the pandemic, and I was talking to an elder, and I said, well, I think we're going to make it through this. And she goes, well, of course we will. We made it through polio. We made it through TB. During, we're going to make it through this. We made it through scarlet fever. And I thought, she's right. This has happened before. This is just our first one. And and she was so calm when she said that. I always think about that when when it seems like things are getting getting a little bit uh, uneasy when we're, when we're looking at this. But she is right. We are going to get through this. And we have a fantastic future that's coming on, in front of us. And we need to look ahead. We're going to create a new normal again. We have one coming. So miigwetch and thank the membership again for allowing me to be one of your leaders.